exciting. Do you think this is? I grew like, up. I deserve it. it. So I've been found. Grew up. I write to a photographer who's really nice. Really nice. Really nice. Really nice. She starts to be lonely. I always thought like this. He said it was political. I always thought we get out. It's lockdown. It's two o'clock in the morning, and suddenly I'm awake. I'm sitting up. My heart is just thumping. You know, ha have I got it right? Like, what's she going to say? Will she be happy? Um, I can't go back to sleep. So I work. So I open Google Docs and I start writing. And there she is. It's just like these pink letters appearing. And a screen icon just like staring at me. And uh, she, she's giving me notes as I write. And her tone is just, it's like critical, cross, scathing, even at 2 a.m. And my heart's thumping again. You know, how long has she been watching me work? She's following me, like through the document, scrutinizing my every word. And my hands start shaking. I I'm in my own home, you know? Like my husband and my kids, they're fast asleep. It should be a sanctuary. Um, there's no escape. I feel hunted. Um, and later, I'm with my... Um, <sighs> later, I'm with my two young children. And we're just, we're just brushing their teeth in the bathroom. And uh, the phone rings, and it's her... And it must be like one minute past nine. I mean, she likes to think that she's got boundaries. <laughs> so I sit on the toilet, I'm just feeling sick. And my children just look at me and go, what is it, mummy? And I realise that I'm crying. Four actors in a room going through their lines. We've come together to tackle a very particular subject. The words we speak are the words of people who came forward to talk about their experiences of bullying in the film and television industry. For obvious reasons, they don't want their identities to be revealed. That's why we're speaking for them. Oh, she could be terrifying. Like, she had this way of just... I don't, she would just make you feel stupid. Because I think, you know, like status is always important, isn't it, for bullies? I mean, she was like, she was posh, she was rich, she was good looking. And now I think about it, I don't think I've ever had a fat, ugly bully. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, they've always been thin. I've never worked on a reality TV show before, so I was quite excited to get a job on quite a well-known one. But it went sour pretty quickly. There was this blame culture which started with the executive producer. All of his shortcomings were blamed on people below him. And I saw several directors get sacked for no justifiable reason. This was my first real job in television. And I joined a team with one director and two assistant producers. I was a researcher. And of course, the two APs, they were much more experienced than me. But before long, the director began to favour me over them. You know, he'd really praise me and give me loads of compliments, which just made me feel awkward. I was in a relationship with a man who was older than me, and he, he was also in the business. And he was a bully in the relationship. Um, and eventually, I ended it, and uh, he was livid. And sometime after that, I went for an interview and I was told, I'm sorry, I can't give you a job because I'm friends. I'm friends with your ex. I was working closely with the talent on this reality show. I was kind of a junior director, so I formed this really good relationship with them. So it was uncomfortable to hear how they were being bad-mouthed and mocked by the creative director of the company and the executive producer, all behind the backs, of course. They had zero respect for them even though they were making the company a lot of money. I tried to stand up for them in the meetings, but I just got ignored. I was really looking forward to the shoot starting. You know, this felt like what it was all about. 
Uh, the director of photography, he was really nice and I got along with him straight away, but the director didn't like this. He said I was flirting with the DOP and that it was disgusting to see how we carried on. I, it was totally ridiculous. We were both in a long-term relationship and, and I was trying to get pregnant at the time. But the director demanded to be copied in on all communication between me and the DOP. Even if it was sending a text about the location for shoot the next day, i.e. doing my job, he insisted on being copied in. I was contacted by a production company who wanted me to direct a three-part series. And they had to get sign-off from the commissioning editor. So they went along to a meeting. I wasn't present. But when my name came up, the commissioning editor said, oh, isn't she the person that went out with, let's call him X. And the next day, I was taken out to dinner by the head of the production company. And he was embarrassed. And he said to me that the commissioning editor had said some nasty, um, very personal things about me. And he wouldn't say what they were, but they couldn't give me the job. Cut. What makes it worse is that the victims are often the ones who care about the job the most. How is it going with the lines? Good. <laughs> Good-ish. These aren't your words, are they? <laughs> no, they aren't my words. Okay. Uh, and you're not Eleanor? I'm not Eleanor, no. I'm an actor. What are you doing? Speaking for her, I suppose. Being her. Being her proxy. You met her, didn't you? You met the real person. Yeah. That was, that was fascinating. I thought she was so brave. I mean, you asked her quite a lot, you know, didn't you? Are you sure you're okay with this? In order to blow the whistle, they have to kind of do it anonymously just now. Yeah, so you're blowing the whistle for them. Yeah, we're doing that. We're gonna put our lips together and blow. I've been bullied a few times because most of the people that do it, they just carry on working because they don't get reported. Well, who are you going to report it to? You know, we're all so worried about the next job. You actually have to be nice to your bully in the hope that they give you a good reference. One time I was so worried I wrote a thanks for a wonderful opportunity letter to a complete monster. <laughs> yeah. I hate myself for that. Another job came up. Uh, same broadcaster, different commissioning editor. And she was keen. But uh, she didn't really know me, so she asked around colleagues. Guess what? She got an email from the person who had said nasty things about me previously. I eventually saw this email, and it said, if you hire this woman, you will be making a rod for your own back. I have worked with her. She is a complete nightmare. It was a lie. I never worked with him. In fact, I had only ever met him once for about 10 minutes years earlier. It got worse. I got a call from the director one night saying I needed to go to Devon the next day to set up a shoot. And I said I couldn't, I didn't feel very well. He started to get angry and he insisted that I go. I don't want to talk to him about my personal life, but he was getting so agitated that I told him that I thought I was having a miscarriage. The next day I got a text from him saying, I couldn't sleep all night, I need to see you this evening. I was brought up in an abusive, bullying family, and um, I always thought, you know, when I get out of here, when I leave home, things can only get better. You know, people will care. And uh, so it's depressing when you come across people who don't care, whose, whose morals are so compromised, they don't, even, they don't even think about the damage they're doing. You know, and yeah, of course, there are, there are good people in this industry. But when I started to complain to colleagues about the bullies, I was told, don't do anything you'll be blacklisted. So, I meet him in a pub, and he's with a friend, which I think is really weird. Let's call them Bill and Ben. 
Bill being the director and, and Ben being the friend. I sit down and I say, I thought we were having a meeting. And then Bill gets up and he says, he's just going to the loo. Then Ben, the friend, says, it means the world to Bill working with you. you know, he thinks so much of you. And then he just gets up and leaves. Then Bill comes back, he sits down and he starts to cry. He says, you tell me you're having a baby. Where does that leave me? Like, he's properly sobbing you know, and everyone is looking at us. This new producer, uh, she came in with this superiority complex. It was clear that we, um, the talent and I, we had this great relationship and she didn't like that. And she told me to stop talking to them unless she was present. <laughs> One day when I was early, I started setting up into the house. She got there and she started shouting at me, told me to never enter the house unless she was there. <laughs> Things like this kept on happening. I was on eggshells all of the time. Then she started criticising me and abusing me in front of the family, making out I didn't know how to do my job. I was really excited actually um, to get my first good job uh, during lockdown. But I quickly realised that my boss would get very stressed and take it out on me. So she would call me and speak to me like I was the stupidest person in the world. I mean, there was real contempt. I got to the stage where she would text or ring and I'd see it was her and my heart rate would just shoot up. I'd start shaking. Yeah, I was scared of her. Um, and then one day we were on a Zoom call and she'd been particularly horrific to me the night before. And there I was, you know, with my face looking at her and it seemed to make her realise that I was a real person. Um, she started saying how she'd hardly slept, you know, because she knew she'd been horrible to me. It didn't change it though. I mean, she continued just being the same. And do you feel a responsibility to this person? Do I feel a what? A responsibility. Oh person. God, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you want to do them justice and this is their story and it's incredibly brave for them to even share it with us, you know. It got worse and worse. Basically, she didn't like the fact that the talent clearly liked me. I tried to raise it higher up, but you know, I was given the usual excuse. It's just a clash of personalities. Keep your head down and do your job. There's a system that, that lets this happen. I mean, basically, it's not a very professional industry. There's short-term contracts, there's no management training, there's rampant egos, and the people at the top won't intervene to deal with it as long as the bullies deliver. You know, ratings are more important than, than the welfare of the workers. So there's one company who are infamous for keeping their staff just like a little bit intimidated. I mean, they probably say on their toes. You know, there's this myth in the industry that you know, if you're scared, well, you'll work harder. And if you're working from home, you know, like lockdown, well, then they'll have to scare you more. Well, he always tried to get me to break up with my boyfriend. You know, he'd criticise him and you know, he'd say he was a total loser. You know, at, at the same time, he would tell me way too much about his relationship with his girlfriend. You know, like, too much detail. You know, the worst thing is that sometimes when it happens, you think, well, I deserve this. You know, like I've been found out. And you feel shame because you actually start to believe that you are being treated badly because you were an awful person or you're bad at your job. You know, you think, okay, well, I've had 10 jobs in a row that have gone well, but though this, this bully knows the truth about me, I'm useless. So the family we were filming, the talent, they told me they didn't like the way I was being treated. So they said they were going to mention it to the executive producer. Naively, I thought this was a good thing and maybe we could sort things out. So I was summoned to this meeting and the producer just attacked me and blamed me for all of the problems. I was so shocked. I'm not very good in confrontational situations. I didn't have the right words. The exec believed everything that she said. 
and I was told that I needed to change my behaviour, otherwise a decision will need to be made. I was almost in tears. Are there other things that you recognise? Yeah. Things I've seen, yeah. It's a part of the culture. It's not even surprising, weirdly. Some of it, you kind of go, God, that's terrible. But it's not surprising. You don't go, you know, I wasn't, I was never like, does that really happen? You yeah, know, well, that's it. When, in reading it, of course, it's really shocking to read. It's horrible to read other people's experiences. <clears throat> but you came, I, I came away from it, and I think being an actor where you kind of go, oh, yeah, well, of, of course that happens. Of course that happened to you. And of course, uh, no one listened to you or did anything about it. I was just so upset when I saw the actual email. It was, it was just, it's just so frightening to think that someone would hate you so much and you have, you've just no way of knowing why. You know, I felt all the same emotions I would have felt if someone had been aggressive to me in person. You know, I, I was bullied without even being in the same room. And you, you, you think about the person behaving badly to you and you just think, why, why, why? You don't really know what's going on when it's actually happening. So when he started to gaslight me, I didn't understand. You know, it was excessive praise. Uh, of course, all of my success was due to him and the way he'd supported me and all the opportunities he'd given. But this was followed by criticism. You know, I did something I shouldn't have done, or I didn't do something that he told me to do. And I, I questioned it, but he told me that I had forgotten because I was often chaotic and disorganized. You know, all this was said with such conviction that I actually started to doubt myself. And it was constant flamboyant praise followed by harsh criticism. I just became totally ground down by him. I lost weight and I felt sick all of the time. And when he told me that I'd make things up to cover for my own mistakes, I believed him. Does it ring true? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think many of us have, you know, had to put on a brave face, as it were, in front of someone that's made us feel awful because they're important, you know? I went to a trade organization for help and they organized a meeting with the person who had been slandering me. And the broadcaster's lawyer was there too. And when I went into the meeting, I was, I was so scared. I thought it was going to be like one of those courtroom dramas where I'd be torn to shreds by the lawyer. And I confronted the man uh, about the email in which he said I was a nightmare to work with. But actually, pretty quickly I realised that they had done very little preparation. I mean, I, w I was so minor and unimportant to them that they hadn't bothered. But, uh, I had. He hired another researcher. Uh, it was a young woman. Uh, she had no experience at all. She was praised to the skies, like I was. Yeah, he was grooming her, like he groomed me. And then I understood about the two assistant producers who were there when I first joined the team and how he'd favoured me over them. Yeah, they'd been bullied as well. Under pressure, the email was produced, heavily redacted, so I have no idea what else he said. But he admitted to sending the email, but claimed it was a case of mistaken identity. And I asked him, who were you mistaking me with? But he couldn't answer. You know, he just sat there twitching and shaking. And I said to him, I want you to know how this felt for me professionally and personally. He had to, um, he had to email all of the people he'd written to about me saying it was untrue. And, you know, that was good in a way, but perhaps it also made me synonymous with trouble. But I, th I think it was worth it, even though it got me on a blacker blacklist because, because of the principle and, and because 
if no one stands up to the bullies, then it just carries on. It never ends. So many people got sacked on the show that everyone was afraid of losing their jobs, so they just did as they were told. The execs protected their jobs by blaming all their mistakes on the junior staff. And yeah, I could have just left, but I was a new dad at the time and we needed the income. Having said that, looking back now, I wish I just quit, got a job in a supermarket. This bad behaviour went all the way up to the creative director of the company. So it was clear that they wanted this toxic environment. This one woman exec that I knew, um, there were so many stories about her. She slapped a researcher across the face. And another time she'd, she'd screamed at someone so much that he had a panic attack and had to breathe into a bag. And then she carried on screaming at him while he was on the floor. I mean, she picked on young people, you know, she praised them, over promote them and then knock them down. And she screamed at me once. I mean, like really screamed for a long time. You know, the kind of screaming where you just like, cry immediately because of the shock of it. It was pretty bad, but I know people have had it worse than me. My experience was more like death from a thousand cuts, months of mental torture, which made me question myself, my ability, my mental strength, leading to paranoia and anxiety. What really saddens me is that I take my job seriously and I'm committed to ensure that I deliver what's asked of me. But because this PD and exec was so good at spinning a web of lies to funnel the, the blame onto other people that I'm always in fear. I'm paranoid that they're still talking about me to other people in the industry. <laughs> now I'm on um, anti-anxiety medication. But at the end, the show was great. Everyone loved it. Yeah. I used to get a lot of work at that company and suddenly I didn't. I'm sure she said some stuff about me. I mean, I didn't mention the bullying. What would I say? So yeah, she stayed. I was the one that suffered. You know, I mentioned how he behaved to a commissioning editor and she kind of shrugged it off and said, but he makes brilliant programs. Like that's a justification for torturing people. I'd say it's worse for women because we are conditioned to be compliant, not to stand up for ourselves, for fear of being seen as pushy or difficult or aggressive. And I think that makes women easier to bully. You know, and I, I meet up with other female directors socially and every single one of us has been called difficult. You know, it's okay to have opinions, but you've got to be submissive too. I don't know, this industry, it is just very, very sexist, even today. And I, I think that makes women easy targets for bullying. Since that last experience, I haven't really worked properly. Um, I just can't face feeling like that again. I still have some shame about it, you know, bully sort of won. Um, although, one thing that did cheer me up is when I saw her in real life at this work drinks thing, and she seemed awkward. Not this, you know, fireball of fury and scathing contempt, you know, haunting me in my bedroom prison 24 hours a day. You know, she told a joke, stuffed up the punchline. I mean, she couldn't even tell a joke. I mean, it's, it's a small victory for me, but I grabbed hold of it with both hands. She might be a bully. She hasn't got any bants. The real change has to start from top. But what's their incentive? The companies skim from the budget. They reduce pay, staff numbers, hours, increasing pressure. But somehow... They deliver, so, you know, the broadcasters, they don't care. There is no independent audit for expenditure or behaviour. As for the future, I'm definitely going to try and appear more confident. I stand up straight and tell people that they can't talk to me like that. Choose projects carefully. Um, I hope that does the trick. In purely practical terms, people work 
better if they feel valued and supported. Anyone with sense knows that you get better work from, <clears throat> from a happier workforce. But uh, still, the tyranny of fear prevails. And now I, I just try to avoid working with fuckwits.